Way back in Amazing Spider-Man number 13 back in 1964, Mysterio first appeared hyped up to be the next big threat for Spider-Man. Mysterio has appeared since then in almost every small screen incarnation of the character, but no big screen incarnations. And as a founding member of the Sinister Six, he's considered one of Spider-Man's oldest and most cleverest villains. And there have also been many Mysterios since the original one, but neither successor has really made an impact. And in this Origins episode, we're going to explore the original Mysterio along with his two successors, considering Jake Gyllenhaal, while he is presumably playing Quinn and Beck, it's very possible that his version of that will be an amalgamation of the previous three Mysterios all into one, because they seem to do that a lot with the different MCU characters. So with all that said and done, let's get into the origins of the original Mysterio, aka Quinn and Beck. So born in Riverside, California, he was working as a stuntman in Hollywood. While he was gifted as a special effects producer and he was quite the talented stuntman, he always felt overlooked. And being constantly overlooked, regardless of his top tier work in the industry, he began dreaming of ways to gain more attention and fame. And after his initial plan, which was basically him trying to become a lead actor, when that didn't work out because he both lacked acting skill and the attractive looks to succeed, he decided instead that he would achieve fame quickly with his talents by portraying a costumed hero. To hide his identity, he created the Mysterio persona, and after faking multiple crimes as Spider-Man to paint him in a more negative light, Mysterio began appearing publicly as a crime fighter to defeat Spider-Man, just deliberately. He appeared at the Daily Bugle, for example, and proclaimed himself to be this new hero intent on stopping Spider-Man. And obviously, J. Jonah Jameson got really excited about the whole thing. Spider-Man ends up exposing him, and instead, Mysterio just becomes a supervillain. And shortly after, he eventually joins the Sandman, Doc Ock, Kraven the Hunter, Vulture, and Electro in forming the Sinister Six. But getting onto the second Mysterio, Daniel Burkhardt, he was actually the second cellmate of Quinn and Beck once Quinn and Beck went to prison. And during their mutual time in prison, Burkhardt ended up learning many of Quinn and Beck's illusionary tricks and his how-tos, if you will. And later on, J. Jonah Jameson, of all people, hired Daniel Burkhardt to impersonate the ghost of Mysterio after Beck's assumed death. But obviously that kind of didn't work out, so it was just a big failure. Eventually, becoming the third version of the villain Jack-O-Lantern instead, with Quinn and Beck's cousin, McGuire Beck, he kind of did that for a little while didn't really work out super well so he eventually returned to that alias of Mysterio once he returned to that identity he did nothing impactful with it there's a cool storyline where all three Mysterios are present you have Quinn and Beck coming back from the dead kind of not really doing much more so just watching and laughing at the other two Mysterios speaking of that third Mysterio he's actually the most interesting to me for a lot of reasons actually one he's a mutant but also I think being the only one with actual superpowers he just always I felt was more of a on paper challenge challenge as Mysterio because his name Francis Clum he was a mutant actually instead of it being natural reasons you could say he was a mutant due to genetic experiments conducted on his parents by Nazi scientists so these Nazi scientists artificially made his parents mutants essentially and from that he and also his brother were born as mutants so it's kind of like a interesting artificial mutancy instead of a natural kind of mutation that resulted in them having abilities because he was jewish he was bullied and i'm not saying that jewish people are automatically bullied but in his origin he was bullied for being jewish and also at the same time abused by his brother garrison garrison could teleport objects short distances his brother forced him to operate in the selling of illegal drugs and basically what they did was Francis with some of his minor telepathic like abilities he would persuade people to buy these drugs while Garrison would teleport the drugs directly into that person's body and bloodstream eventually however Francis ended up killing his brother because his brother started taking things too far I mean he almost raped black cat he almost killed a few people he probably did kill some people anyways but general point is he was starting to go above and beyond what their original intent was and later after talking the black cat on the bridge that when Stacy ended up dying in, Spider-Man found him. And unfortunately, Spider-Man got really triggered by the location, because that's where Gwen Stacy died and the memories of that. And he kind of lost control and attacked Francis, resulting in him having permanent scars, multiple bruises, and a shattered leg. And Francis, at this point, was more of a victim than anything else. He really wasn't trying to be a villain or anything like that, but that experience caused him to develop a hatred for Spider-Man, urging him to, in his mind, I'll pose as a non-superhuman foe, because if he doesn't think I 
my powers, he'll hold back, he won't be as aware, and then bam, I'll use my powers and I'll catch him. So what he does is he buys an extra Mysterio suit that at the time Daniel Burkhart sold to the Kingpin, and buying that from the Kingpin, learns how to use the suit and decides to target Peter Parker. Coincidentally, once his identity was revealed in Civil War. So this is the storyline I was talking about, but I think it was definitely he has a much more sympathetic origin and just kind of sad all around. Going into their abilities, Quentin Beck's Mysterio has no biological superhuman abilities, but instead uses a lot of gadgets, tricks, and illusions to help portray an alias as a master of mysticism. He's also very smart, he has what you would call genius level intellect, and his inventions in engineering and chemistry are ridiculously complex. This came in the form of various androids, hallucinogenic gases, holographic projections, and technology he's used in his suit. For example, he has gases that can neutralize Spider-Man's spider sense. He also has holographic projections that can trigger Spider-Man's spider sense to kind of trick him into believing things. And also at the same time, two of his androids were so advanced they were mistaken for actual living beings. The first android was actually the Ultimate Mysterio. So the way Ultimate Mysterio works is pretty much it's an android, the 616 Mysterio, sends to the Ultimate Universe. So that just shows you how advanced in his robotics Quinn and Beck is to make something that advanced that ahead of his time. And also his second android of note is his quote unquote daughter named Misty Beck aka Mysteria. She was so lifelike to the point where not only did she have her own sentience, but she actually studied and became an expert expert in real magic. So unlike her father, she actually practiced real magic. Now the suit allows up to 30 minutes of air supply along with the boots being specially designed to enhance your leaping and running speed while also taking in extra impacts from falls. And his speech modulator gives him speech pattern kind of called hypnotic and mind bending. He also has tech in the suit allowing him to teleport and disrupt surrounding electronics similar to an EMP. And the third Mysterio, Francis Klum, who is a mutant, his abilities regarded teleportation, telepathic suggestion, and some telekinesis. So his teleportation was actually unique in a way where he could not only teleport himself, but objects, especially objects around him. However, it drained his stamina in doing so. And his ability to persuade were powerful enough where he was able to force people to do things like commit suicide, commit crimes, even if they wouldn't do that at all normally. But comment below your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think about this? Was this helpful? What character would you like to see us do next? Comment below and we'll see you guys next week.